Hi, my name is Britt Hoskins, and I'm the career advisor serving the Colleges of Agricultural Sciences, Forestry, and SEOS. So this video is an overview of the Career Development Center's main services as well as tools. So just to show you how to use them, um, how to access them, what they're good for, all of that. So let's get started. Let me share my screen with you here. Switch into our PowerPoint. Okay, so how to use career tools and services. So first, um, how do you access um, our office? So um, we have a great Career Development Center website, career.oregonstate.edu, and on this we have everything from our online tools, which I'm going to talk about, to uh, resume and cover letter samples, things for graduate students, for applying for grad school, a full career guide, we have a ton of stuff up there. So that is always accessible to you. So that's a great place to start. Normally we have in-person drop-ins in the Kerr administration building, uh, but uh, spring term, we're going to be going to uh, virtual drop-ins. So you can access those and sign up for those through the Career Center website as well. And we also um, have uh, appointments with your college specific career advisors, uh, people like me. Uh, so there is a specific person assigned for each college and you can book appointments with them through Handshake. So they can talk with you about some of the harder questions, you know, maybe what do I wanna do with my life, um, salary negotiation, uh, resumes and cover letters as well, but um, you know, job searching, uh, wherever you're at in your career process, a career advisor can help you with that. So here are our career advisors for the different colleges. We have uh, Claire Wu, Carla Rockford, uh, me, Britt Hoskins, um, and Eric White. So here are our four career tools. We have Handshake, VMOC, Focus 2, and Standout. So I'll just give a quick overview of them and then I'll go into much greater depth. Handshake is the main one that I want you to remember because it's kind of just the hub where everything is. So this is where our university-wide job board is. So any employer that contacts someone like me, a career advisor, contacts your professor, your advisor, um, we're gonna be directing them back to Handshake to post their opportunity there. Additionally, this is where all of our career events and um, appointments with career advisors are. So uh, for example, we have our Getting a Damn Job series uh, that we do each uh, term, cover topics like resumes and cover letters and interviewing and things like that. So this term is going to be virtual. And so that is available um, on Handshake. You can find anything like that. Uh, VMUC is artificial intelligence resume reviewing. So you can upload your resume and get uh, feedback in real time um, instantly. So that's a great tool. Uh, focus two is career exploration. So you can learn about possible occupations that you might enjoy. You learn a little bit about your working personality. It is a really great tool for exploring. And then finally, we have Standout, which is our practice interviewing tool that you can do uh, via video from anywhere. So let's dig into those tools. So first one is Handshake. So Handshake, like I mentioned, is the hub. So this is where you can go to find jobs and internships. Um, really any kind of job. On-campus jobs are there, post-graduation jobs, you know, graduate student level jobs, you know, maybe a few years out of the university jobs. These are where em employers who want to hire students specifically go to Handshake. So that's great for you because it's an already narrowed job board as opposed to some of the macro job boards that everybody can apply to. These are employers who have said, I wanna hire Oregon State students. So they've selected Oregon State. <clears throat> now, Handshake is actually used by over 900 universities. So it really is the gold standard across the United States that all of the universities are using and that employers are really drawn to for that reason. Also, you can keep using Handshake after you graduate. You just have to make sure to keep your uh, email address current with our office. So you can keep using that job board if you end up uh, switching uh, careers a couple, a couple of years um, after graduation. Um, you always have access to Handshake, so uh, keep that in mind. So um, it's where you would sign up for career fairs, workshops, lectures, and webinars every term. So this term, we're not gonna have our main university-wide career fair, uh, but we 
So we'll also have some uh, virtual lectures and things like that. So keep an eye out for that on Handshake in the event section. And then finally, college specific career advisors. So you can meet with people like me via phone or via Zoom. Um, and you can find that under the Career Center tab. It's a little bit hidden. So don't, um, if you're having trouble finding it, that's where it is. So the good news is you all already have a Handshake account. So uh, you can log in from the Career Center website with your own ID. You don't have to set up anything. So that makes it really easy to access it. Uh, one thing that is important to note is that um, there is an OSU specific portal or version of Handshake. So you don't wanna just Google Handshake. You wanna access Handshake from the Oregon State website so that you get to the Oregon State version of it. There is uh, Handshake apps, so you can access it from your phone, which is great. You can also set up your notification preferences to figure out how often you want to be notified. Do you want emails when new jobs post? Do you want to hear from uh, <clears throat> people like me when we're inviting students to events? You have control over what you receive and when from Handshake. And then um, Handshake is um, a lot like Netflix in the sense that it learns what you like and then it uh, suggests more things to you. <clears throat> so the more you use the tool, the better it gets. So if you favorite specific jobs or specific employers, it will say, hey, um, these jobs you might also like. These are in kind of the same realm. Or if you favorite a certain employer, it might say, oh, did you know that this employer recently posted something new? So as you get really busy with your classes, it's really easy to forget about post, you know, applying for jobs. But, um, but Handshake does a lot of that work for you if you set some of your preferences and favorites. Um, <clears throat> the next step in Handshake would be to fill out your profile. Again, you don't have to do this, but there's some benefits to it. So if you upload your resume, Handshake is similar to LinkedIn in that respect. Um, you can actually apply for jobs directly from Handshake. Uh, and you can also make it possible that employers can find you. So um, if you upload your resume and do a good job with that, then you can click this button here, uh, make profile public to employers. So if you click that, then that opens you up to new opportunities. So an employer might be looking for students in a certain degree program. So, you know, for example, they're looking for kinesiology students or they're looking for horticulture students and they can do a search on any student who's made their uh, profile public and they could actually send you a message and say, hey, I have this job. Do you want to come apply for it? Uh, so that can be um, a really great step if you want that uh, possibility of being discovered by an employer. Um, and Handshake makes it really easy. You can take your resume and you can upload it as a document and it will actually extract the information out of it that would go into your profile and fill out the profile for you. Of course, you're going to want to check the profile and make sure that everything came through accurately, <clears throat> but it really makes it very easy. Um, you are automatically opted out from being visible to employers, so you have to opt into that. Uh, same with your GPA, you're automatically opted out, but if you want to show off that GPA, then you can unclick that uh, lockbox and then employers will be able to see it. So as I mentioned, you can attend all kinds of upcoming events, workshops, fairs, everything like that. Um, you can find that on the events uh, tab. And let's talk a little bit more about the job searching feature. So my main recommendation is to search by keyword. Uh, Handshake is pretty good about looking for specific words. So for example, you might want a mapping position. So you search for GIS, or you might want to search for the word policy or lab or whatever word is going to pull in things that are related to your field. That works a little better than trying to filter by major because a lot of times employers check that they're, they're willing to work with all majors. So you might get results that are not quite as good there or not quite as specific to your field. So I like searching by keyword and then by location. So let's say you wanna live in the Portland area, you might wanna set a, a radius of 100 miles around Portland. Um, or wherever you're from. Uh, the, the positions will be a little bit more clustered around the Northwest. And the reason is because more employers from our area will be more likely to check Oregon State as a school of interest. But there are positions across the country in Handshake that are listed for Oregon State students. So <clears throat> we talked about favoriting positions. Um, 
And you can also search by industry as well. There's some industry clusters that they've built in. Uh, so play around with the filters, um, figure out what you like to do, you know, save filters if that's helpful. Um, a new feature of Handshake is peer reviews. So if you um, complete an internship and you want to post a review about your employer, you can go and do that in Handshake. Or if you're considering working for an employer, you can see if anybody else at another uh, university or at Oregon State has posted a review so you can learn more about that company. So that's a great feature for students. So moving on to VMUC. So VMUC is our artificial intelligence resume reviewer. So you can get a robot to read your resume. Uh, so um, first you're gonna take that resume and you're gonna turn it into a PDF and then you're going to upload it on VMUC. And VMUC will give you uh, feedback within seconds. So you can do this anytime from anywhere. You don't have to make an appointment. You just upload your resume and it will give you individualized point by point feedback. So it'll give you a score. So it'll say out of 100, where is it ranking you? As well as it will highlight things and it'll say, oh, you know, maybe there's a stronger word you could use here or your, your font changed here, or your spacing is off here. So it will just go through and find all of those little technical things as well as some of the content things. So VMOC offers feedback based on three categories. So impact, so <clears throat> um, how well are you, um, uh, appealing to recruiters uh, with how you're wording your resume. Uh, presentation would be uh, the formatting. So how is it structured? Uh, what is the visual appearance like? What's the grammar like? Uh, and then competencies, it's looking at things like leadership or collaboration or analytical thinking. And they'll say, you know, you don't have very much leadership on your resume, so maybe you should add more. It's not going to get very specific for the specific job that you want in your field, it, it can't go quite that far, but it can give you some really good general feedback that can help really anybody. So reminders about VMOC, um, pay more attention to the feedback it's giving you than the score. So it's important to know that, that VMOC tends to score people pretty low. Um, so it's not at all uncommon to have a really good resume and for it to be giving you like a 40 or a 50 out of 100. That's pretty normal. It's just the way that it's reading things and the way it's deducting points. So don't get discouraged by the score. Just try to improve from wherever you start. And um, I really look at that, that individualized feedback um, and the specific points that it's giving you. And then I would encourage you to take those points, make some changes, and then re-upload the resume um, so that you can get a new score and see how you've improved. So really have an open attitude to learn. Um, even if you've done a million resumes, even if you're um, a graduate student and you have a seven page CV and you feel really confident about it, there's almost always something that it can help you with if you can be open to that feedback. And then just take a few things worth a grain of salt. So like, you, like I said, if you had a long CV or you have a federal resume, it might be not as equipped to understand those resumes as it would be a private sector resume, but it doesn't mean that there's not some really good feedback there. <clears throat> and I would say after you've done that VMOC review, make sure that you get a human to look at it as well, whether that's a professor, an advisor, a career advisor like me, a career assistant in the career center, um, just somebody, uh, maybe somebody in the industry, um, get several sets of eyes on it. VMOC is a really great starting point. Okay, tool number three, focus two. So this is a great tool for career exploration. So you take these um, different assessments here, work interest assessment, personality assessment, values assessment, and leisure assessment. So um, based on all these different assessments you do, um, you can learn a lot about your working personality. You know, what makes you tick, what occupations you might be interested in, um, what uh, positions um, people who have similar personalities have been happy in. So it can be really helpful as you're trying to narrow down what you might want to do or if you're having discussions about which major to pick uh, to take this assessment. So uh, one of the outcomes that will give you a Holland code, which is, is a, it's based on a um, psychological evaluation of a working personality type. And um, so for example, you might be an ASE. So artistic, social, and enterprising. Um, and then that 
I'll show you um, what people with ASE uh, personality types, what types of positions they might like. So it might uh, print out for you um, or pull up for you uh, 20 occupations that you might be interested in. And um, I would encourage you to not fixate on any particular position that doesn't seem right to you or why are they pulling that in. Um, I would instead think, what are the themes here? What is it trying to tell me? Okay, a lot of these positions are analytical positions, or these are related to working with people, or these are communication type positions. Uh, so if you can kind of try to take a step back and look at the themes, it might really help you figure out commonalities in some of the positions, even if some of them are off base from what you would be more interested in. The values assessment is really helpful as well. So if you can try to narrow down, what are those top values? So what is your North Star? So for example, if you're very um, uh, socially minded and you really wanna make a difference in the world and that's your driver, um, that top value might you know, maybe lead you into nonprofit work or into the medical field, for example. Or if you're really driven by uh, security and salary, then if that's like a top value, that might be really important. It might lead you into maybe something more technical or a management position. So those values can really help steer you as you make career decisions. And then uh, finally, Focus 2 has a new assessment called Am I Career Ready? So you can um, do a self-assessment where you're looking at um, common steps that people take to get ready for their career. And you can just um, decide where you are in that process and some of the areas that you've done really well at and maybe areas where you can take some steps forward. So that's a really good kind of benchmarking. Like where are you at uh, in your career planning process and how can you get to where you wanna go? Finally, we have our fourth tool, Standout. So this is video interview practice. So whether you have a virtual interview coming up, a phone interview, an in-person interview, uh, any interview you could use this platform to help you practice. So it has built-in questions. Uh, so it will ask you uh, questions automatically. You can select different types of interviews recorded by different professors, advisors across campus, and it will randomly generate questions so that it's different each time. And then you record your answers and you can watch it back. Uh, and so this can be really helpful as you evaluate your body language, your answers, your content, uh, whether you're using a lot of ums, um, whether you're easy to understand. And it actually will give you a comprehensibility score. So if you're mumbling a lot, you're speaking low, you're kind of speaking away from the camera, it, um, it will pick up on that and it will, that will come out in your comprehensibility score. So the nice thing about Standout is you can practice as many times as you want on your own um, and really get ready for that interview in a very low pressure environment. And um, in the age of um, Zoom and a lot of virtual uh, um, appointments and meetings and potentially interviews, um, it's really great that we have this video interviewing tool to help you with that. So uh, finally, I just wanted to re-highlight that we have a ton of stuff on our Career Center website, including our full um, career guide that, that covers a whole bunch of topics that could be helpful to you. So, um, um, so we have the four tools, uh, Handshake, Standout, VMOC, and Focus 2. Uh, we have career advisors and career assistants standing by to help you. And then we have this great website with a career guide. So hopefully that gives you a good start at um, moving towards your future career goals.